This video is going to show you how to do partial quotients. It's just like the traditional method, except we write the numbers in a different place and use what we know about times tens. For example, let's solve this problem. 144 divided by 4. Just like in the traditional method, we would cover up the 4 and 4 and just look at the 1. We ask ourselves, can 4 go into 1? And of course it can't because it's too small. So we uncover the first 4. Now we have 14. And we ask ourselves, can 4 go into 14? Sure it can. 3 times 4 equals 12. Of course, we're looking at 14 with one, with one number covered up. So we're going to need to add a 0 to make it be 30. We write 30 on the side. Then we do 30 times 4, or in my head I would do 3 times 4 is 12 with a 0 on the end, or 120. I write the 120 under my dividend. So then I subtract 144 minus 120, which is 24. This is just like in the traditional method when you would subtract 14 minus 12 and then bring down the 4. You end up with the same answer. Next, we ask ourselves, can 4 go into 24? And we say, sure it can. 6 times 4 is 24. So then we do 6 times 4. We write 6 on the side. 6 times 4 is 24. 24 minus 24 is 0. Since we have 0 in our at the end of our answer, no, we are finished. Then to find the actual answer, we do we can add the numbers that are on the right side, or we can, in this case, just say their names. 30, 6. Just like adding 30 plus 6. What if, though, in the traditional method, or in this method, you accidentally forgot that 3 would work, and you thought, oh, I think 2 will work. Well, in the traditional method, you would do 2 times 4 is 8, and then find out that you didn't subtract enough, and have to erase and start over again. In partial quotients, you don't have to do that. You can keep working. So in this case, let's say we thought that it was 2, and we covered up the last 4, so we write 20. 20 times 4 is 80. 144 minus 80 is 64. And we ask ourselves, can 4 go into 6? And we say, oh, yes, it can. I must have missed one. But instead of starting over, we can just write 10 on the side. Now we have 10 times 4 is 40 and we subtract. 64 minus 40 is 24. Now we're back to where we were at the end of the last problem. We say what number times 4 goes into 24? Well it's 6. 6 times 4 is 24 and 24 minus 24 is 0. You see how partial quotients can make the, your life easier when you, have, when you make a mistake early in the problem? In the traditional method if you don't use a big enough number, you will run out of space and have to start over again. In the partial quotients, you can just keep working. This becomes especially important when you have double digit divisors where you don't know what number times your divisor is going to equal and you're making estimates. Let's review this one more time. Step one, cover up all the numbers of the dividend except the first number. Step two, ask yourself if that number can be divided by the divisor. Step three, if it can't, like in this problem, we then have to uncover one of the fours and use 14. Step four, when you can divide, do so, adding zeros for each number you left covered. In this case, we left the last four covered. So when we knew that three times four equals 12, we would then add a 0 to the 3 to make it be 30. Step 5. Multiply the number along the right side with the divisor and write, the, and write it below the quotient. In this example, that's 30 times 4, or I would do in my head 3 times 4, which is 12 with a 0 on the end, or 120. Step 6. Subtract. In this case, it's 144 minus 120, which equals 24. 
Step 7. Repeat the previous steps until the subtraction answer is less than the divisor. In this case, we now have 24, so we have to ask ourselves what number times 4 equals 24. And in that case, it would be 6. So then we do it again. We put our 6 along the side and do 6 times 4 is 24 and then subtract. And we get 0, which is less than our divisor. Step 8. Add the numbers on the right side. In this case, because we didn't miss any, we can just say the numbers out loud. 30, 6. That's our answer. Step 9. Write the remainder, or write it as a fraction over the divisor. This problem doesn't have any remainder, so we don't need to write 0. However, if the number was 145 instead of 144, we would have ended up with a remainder of 1. So we could write it as 36 remainder 1, which means 36 in each group with 1 left over. The problem with remainders is we don't know how big they are, because a remainder 1 out of 2 would be like a half, whereas a remainder 1 out of 100 would be very small if you tried to break it up to everybody in the group. So we can write it, if we write it as a fraction, it will help us to show how big that extra piece is. And it's really easy to do. What you do is take the remainder and put it as the top of your fraction or numerator. Then, underneath the fraction, you write the number you divided by, or the divisor, in the denominator spot. So in this case, it would be 36 and 1, our remainder, over 4, our divisor, or 36 and 1 fourth. Step 10. Always do this step because it will always help you to make sure you got the right answer. Check your work by multiplying the quotient and the divisor. And then add any remainder you have. In the problem we just did, we got an answer of 36. And we divide it by 4. So 36 times 4 does equal 144. So for that original problem, that's the correct answer. And we know we are right. When we did 145, we had a remainder of 1. So after doing 4 times 36 and getting 144, we would add our remainder back in, which would give us the 145 that we had in our second number. Hopefully, you can see how partial quotients can be a really easy way to do division. It breaks it down into little pieces, and it allows you to make some small mistakes and still get the right answer without having to erase and start over again.